Hey guys, in this video, we'll look into Descendant OS on Ami 11X, that's this device right here, which is also known as the Poco F3 or the Redmi K40 in other regions. So in this video, we'll go over the ROM, its features, my experience using it, as I've been using it for about a week, body life, idle drain, etc. Some benchmarks, and in the later part of the video, we'll see how to install it. So let's get started. So this is what the home screen looks like. It is the default pixel launcher, as you can see. So if I long tap on the home screen and we can set the wallpaper as well as theme the icons as per the colors of the wallpaper. So basically material view. The widgets are the same. So let's go to widgets and let's just got it. I'll just put a clock widget. Let's select a clock. This one looks good. And let's put it here and set it with the numeral one. So. So that's Material View widget. Now, one of the best things about Material View that the widgets use is that I can drag the widget to any corner and the color of the widget dynamically changes. So you can see this color. I can just, I hope I get this. Let's just minimize this. As you can see, the color changed a bit. If I move it here, the color will change and it dynamically changes as per the wallpaper. This is pretty cool. So looking at the notification shade, so this is how the notification shade looks like. There are a bit of extra features in the notification shade. As you can see, the icons are not the regular and at 12 notification icons. We can update it and let's just see how to do that. So this is the notification icons. This is not the regular ones. I can just go to settings, display and just scroll down. So here you have quick settings, old tiles appearance. So by default, it looks like this. It looks like this rounded squares I believe they are squares so rounded squares I like the under 12 one this this is how it looks in under 12 and if I just press uh, see compact tiles this is how I like it apart from this there are a bit of extra features like the Wi-Fi toggle so in go and under 12 Google removed the mobile data as well as the Wi-Fi toggle and just combine them into one toggle that's internet in this ROM, you can just separate the two. So you have the Wi-Fi toggle here and your mobile data. So that's pretty cool. Of course, you can just go to edit and select the internet toggle as you can see, but this is better in my opinion. Anyways, going back, there's one more toggle. So I selected it, that's refresh rate, <laughs> not this brightness. That's refresh rate right here. So it's set to 60 Hertz because my camera acts weird with 120 Hertz. So I can just tap on it and it changes to 120 time around it again and it changes to 60. Let's quickly jump into the settings. So this is how the settings looks like. It's the regular AOSB settings. So network and internet is the same, connected devices are the same, apps the same, notification the same, battery will come to it later. Storage is the same, sound and vibration. There are some extra shortcuts here. So I can show the shortcut to prevent ringing. I can just tap on it and it shows me how to prevent ringing. Same for DND. I have turned on DND. I can just tap on it and I can turn off now and a lot of notifications would come. So I'll not turn that off. Anyways, media volume, call volume, ring and notification volume and I can unlink the volumes too. So that's pretty cool. We can just scroll down and you can see everything is the same. Now let's go back and display. So the display, there are two shortcuts here too. So lock screen, clock style and admin notification. So for admin notification to work, I have to turn on admin mode, so we'll just turn that later on. Anyways, rest, everything is the same. Brightness, adaptive brightness, lock screen, screen timeout, dark theme. If I want to turn on dark theme, it will go to dark. Let's keep it light. Font size, just play side, night light, color. So we have natural booster, saturated, as well as adaptive. I kept it natural. Then you have touch features. Double tap to wake. So if I just lock my phone, I can double tap and it wakes. That's pretty cool. And improve touch sensitivity. So to improve your touch latency. Anyways, we have Monet personalization. So I can select the colors that I want. I do not like this. Let's what's the color mustard color. I can select a custom color and everything changed. So the custom color is blue and everything is blue. Kind of like blue. I'll just keep it off. That's this looks cool. Anyways, there are a lot of settings here too. Going back, I already showed you this old tile appearance, custom tiles, comp 
compact tiles, only notification, etc. data dashboard. So if I tap on it, you can see the data dashboard. What all data that I've used. So Wi-Fi usage, SIM card usage, download speed as well as upload speed. Let's just turn it off and battery estimate. So nothing is being shown right here. If I turn it on, it shows I have until 6.45 till my battery runs out with this kind of usage. So there's that. Then you have auto rotate, minimum refresh rate, peak refresh rate and screen saver. So by default, the minimum is set to 60 and the maximum is 120. I've set it to 60 because of my camera. You just set it to 120 for better fluidity. Anyways, going back, wallpaper style as you, can, as you have seen, the wallpaper style, I'll just select a different color scheme. That's cool. Rest, everything is the same. Password and account, digital well-being, Google. Now there's digital health. So this is what the digital health looks like. My app usage, my screen stats, etc. And then I have my system, few more shortcuts. So let's go one by one. So language and input is the same. If I tap on it, I get languages and input, same as AOSP, gestures, some quick gestures, which AOSP has, Quick, quickly open the camera. System navigation, I can select gestures or two buttons or three buttons. Press and hold the power button. What, the, what will that do? If I just hold the power button, and my Google Assistant will be invoked. Let's just invoke it. As you can see, my Google Assistant invoked. I'll just keep it off. And then prevent ringing, swipe to screenshot. So three, ta three fingers, swipe to screenshot. Cool. Double tap to sleep on lock, lock screen. So we can double tap to wake the phone, but we can double tap to make the phone go to sleep. That's pretty. Cool. Also, if you just look at the lock screen, it shows my weather too. So that's also pretty cool. Okay, let's just don't tell my password to anyone. It's very complicated. Anyways, volume rocker skips tracks. So this is new. This was, I believe, I used it in the lineage OS days where I could just lock my phone. And if I'm listening to music, I can just long press the volume up or volume down button to switch tracks. This brings back a lot of memories. Anyways, double tap on the status bar to sleep and there's gestures magic. So this is a separate app that this particular ROM has. So that's shush to pick up. So if someone calls, if I pick it up, it will silence. Answer call, shush to call, flip. So if I flip the phone, my ringtone will be silenced. Reject call and flip. So you can do that too. Then media halting. So media halting is a very good feature. If I'm playing a song, and let's say if I just go to, not here, let's see if I just, not studio, if I just go to music, and I believe this is a non-corporate song. So this is a non-corporate song. If I just reduce the volume, it didn't pause, but why is that? Okay, so this was disabled. Anyways, if I just go to here, uh, not this, if I just go to UT Music and let's say my volume is maxed out. And if I just, as you can see, it paused. And if I, I selected the other op option too. So if I just increase the volume, it will play. That's pretty cool in my opinion. Anyways, this is paused. Let's just close this up. So this, these are gestures magic. Anyways, let's go back status bar tuner what i want in the status bar what i do not want in the status bar etc what's new so what's new in this rom you can see what the developer has written for this rom etc rules develop options reset options okay so this rom supports 90 hertz on pubg and 120 hertz on call of duty so if i just show you the FPS also. So if I just go to sound and vibration and I have do not disturb with me. So I have a schedule set. So gaming, I have turned it on. If it's turned off, you can just turn it on. What it will do, it will also be disabled. So when I launch a game, game dashboard will be available and which will show me the FPS. So if I just launch PUBG, okay. So in PUBG, if I just go to settings, let's just go to settings. And uh, let's just go to, first of all, this thing, the frame rate, it's set to 30 right now. And if I just go to, let's say graphics, you can see I have smooth selected and I have a 90, 90 FPS option. 
but the other options that's balance hg and hgr i have extreme so that's 60 hertz so we have 90 hertz on pubg and i have played a lot of games on pubg and the phone gets warm when i play pubg but does not get hot anyways i'll just close everything up similar for call of duty but for 120 fps on call of duty you have to keep the settings at medium and the frame rate to max otherwise you'll get 60 fps if you set the frame rate to medium graphics to medium and the frame rates to high or ultra whatever the max option is you'll get 120 hertz gaming on call of duty as for the speakers it was okay it doesn't have dolby atmos pre-installed i can just root my phone and install a magisk, magisk module but i didn't do that because i don't care that much about dolby atmos this was my secondary phone that's why now moving on to battery life so as i've told you this is my secondary phone so it's mostly used for media and gaming as for how long it lasted it lasted me for more than a day i could not figure out the screen on time as it shows me the screen on time for the last 24 hours anyways uh, if i just go to settings and then battery there is no screen on time i can just go to battery usage and select this but this is also not accurate well if i just go to photos and show you the screenshot here's my screenshot so it says my screen on time is nine minutes but i use youtube for one hour and 43 minutes so i believe that's about so as i've already told you it lasted me for more than a day my screen on time i could not calculate because of this the charging is just fine it's not fast now there is one more thing in battery so if i just go to battery and uh, let's just go to where's the battery we have thermal profiles so i can select the thermal profile for my apps i can select an app let's say uh, and to do benchmark and i can select benchmark camera dialer or gaming and it should adjust the profile the battery profile to that but i felt it did not help because i ran a lot of benchmarks and this never helped although it helped in cpu throttle which we'll see later on there are some weird things that are found now sometimes my fingerprint scanner didn't recognize one of my fingers that was pretty weird and one time when i was listening to music on spotify connected my bluetooth earbuds had a timer running as i like to time my workout sets the phone just stopped responding to my touch for like 10 seconds it was fine after that but that was a weird glitch that i found anyways let's just move to benchmarks so with geekbench i got a score of 986 on single score on single core and 3378 on multi-core i ran it a lot of times i just turned on the benchmark thermal profile and ran it again i got a single core score of 966 and a multi-core of 3212 so less than this so this does not help anyways moving on to antutu so my first score was 6,97,221 respectable score my second score was 6,93,346 this was not back to back but i let the phone cool down and then i ran it again anyways i ran it one more time set with the thermal profile set as benchmark and i got a score of 6,91,000 so you see the trend here I got 697 the first time, then I got 693 and I turned on battery, the thermal profiles, I got 691. So those profiles don't work. Now where do they do work is for CPU throttle. So this was the first run of my CPU throttle test. 15 minutes, my CPU throttle was 78% and the scores are not good. And you can see the graph, it's not good. I thought there must be some issues, so I ran it a second time. And as you can see, it's still not good. Now I just turned on a, the thermal profile on CPU throttle to benchmark, I set the CPU throttle app to benchmark in the thermal profiles and I ran it again. It ran perfectly. CPU throttle to 95% with average of 2,52,517 GIPS, minimum of 242,717 GIPS and a maximum of 259,314 GIPS. That's pretty good as you can see from the graph too. All green nothing in yellow too so that's pretty cool so this was all about the rom how this rom feels like my experience using the rom anyways now let's just see how to install it so for installing the rom there are a few prerequisites so the first one as you can see is miui you should have miui installed if you don't know how to do it there's a link in the cards as well as in the description below 
And the second thing is a custom recovery. If you don't know how to install a custom recovery, there's a link to that too. And yeah, you should have an unlocked bootloader. Link of that will be in the description as well. The last thing are two files. So the link of the file will be in the description below and just go ahead and download them. Now, the first one is a firmware file and the second one is the ROM file. The firmware file is different for 11X, Poco F3 and Redmi K40 download for your specific device. After that is done, let's just power off this device and let's go to recovery. But just copy all those files in your pen drive and an ODG cable because you should have this if you are an avid ROM flasher. Anyways, going to recovery, volume up and power at the same time. You'll get the Mi logo and after you get the vibration, like I got right now, I'll just leave the buttons and as you can see, Orange Fox recovery is just played. And after I get the screen, now you remember in my last video, if you've seen it, I told you Android 12 is not decryptable on Orange Fox, but Android 11 is. That's why I can see my internal storage. Anyways, I'll just attach my pen drive and I'll just go to the hamburger icon, mount, and I'll mount my OTG. That's it. I'll just go to my OTG. I have descendant OS, so I'll just flash the firmware file first. In a few seconds, it will be flashed. And straight after that, we'll flash the ROM file. Let it flash first, we'll flash the ROM file after that. That's done. Let's just go back, back again, and then the ROM file. Now, this might take a bit of time, so be patient. If you're an Orange Fox recovery and you think this is stuck, it is not stuck. You can see the progress bar right here. It is progressing slowly but steadily. Okay, all is done. If you get this device on super may not boot until etc etc just ignore it wipe cache and all now don't just reboot your system go back now just go to reboot and reboot to recovery remember this reboot to recovery not to system and uh, let's just remove the odg cable right here and if you get this just choose factory reset and for my data and for my data and in a few seconds data would be formatted Anyways, it's done. Just let's just reboot the system. And I got the Descendant OS logo. So this is how you install Descendant OS. This was the installation. It was the installation as well as my experience using Descendant Pro. So if you like this video, give this video a thumbs up. Looks something like this. Share it with the friends so they also know how to flash Descendant OS on their phone. Comment for any queries regarding this ROM. And if you want me to try other ROMs, let me know in the comments as well. And if you want me to try out other benchmarks that I don't know of, let me know in the comments as well. And since you're commenting, hit that red subscribe button and the bell icon. That's it for this video. I'll catch you in the next one.